Walton. And now, the starters for your IPFW Mastodon. men's volleyball match between the Cardinals of Ball State University and the IPFW Volley Dons. Ryan Parrott, what can be said, one of the best rivalries in college volleyball. Says uh, the crowd keeps filing in and in tonight. It's, uh, it's one of those things where people know how competitive both these teams are and they just make for great entertaining volleyball matches and that's what people have paid to see and that's what they're gonna see tonight. Well, both these teams uh, are coming in on winning streaks. IPFW has won six matches in a row. They're eight and four. Ball State has won four matches in a row. They're eight and four. But in the MIV race, IPFW number one, five and one, while Ball State is only two and two. Quick thoughts on this match. Well, IPFW, they're starting to found their groove right now after a, a slow start to the season, going out to Hawaii, losing a couple of tough matches there. They're starting to get in sync uh, as a team. Uh, I look for them to carry that uh, into tonight as well. And Ball State, they, they found their way. You know, they won four in a row. A lot of teams thought coming in that Ball State, after losing their setter uh, last year back to Canada, Mike Monday, that uh, you know they would slip and slide a little bit. But uh, they've been competitive this year. Well, we look forward to an exciting match. We've had the playing of the national anthem. Players, uh, the pregame congratulatory handshakes, and we're almost ready to go. Uh, Ball State will be in their traveling red uniforms with white trim. And the Valley Dons in the home. Blue and white jerseys, blue trim, blue shorts. And uh, boy, it's a nice crowd filing in. You're just saying more and more people coming in. And this ought to be a, a heck of a volleyball match. You see some of the players warming up, uh, getting ready to go. I believe Ball State won the toss, and they will serve first. I want to remind you that the telecast of this volleyball match is brought to you in part by Dairy Queen, Waterfield Mortgage, Fuji Film, Touchstone, Chestnut Group Incorporated, Farm Bureau Insurance, and Pizza Hut of Canterbury. And we thank them for letting us come into your homes tonight. It's going to be IPFW with the serve to start the match. Jeff Patak on the way. Ooh, just wide. Man, the serve is wide. Side out to Ball State. Jeff Robertson serving for the Cardinals. Player hits the net, side out to IPFW. Ryan, matches like this, what is the focus at the beginning? Is it just to play a little tug of war or just to go right at it? It's a feeling out process, it is. You know, uh, perhaps some nerves, you know, big crowd as always for Ball State and IPFW whenever those two teams get together. Uh, a little feeling out process, each team wants to try to establish themselves early. Uh, evidently, there's, after a discussion, it's going to be a replayed point. They're questioning what happened there. Chris Gislin went to set the ball, and one of the Ball State players reached over while he was setting the ball, and they called a violation on him, and now they're uh, taking that back. Reserve. Nice block by Angel Ruiz. And again, it's side out, Great IPFW. Stuff. Great stuff there by Angel. One on one in the middle, penetrated and stuff blocked. And he gets to serve to boot. So Ruiz, 6'7 freshman from Puerto Rico. Great tag team block between Hector Soto and Mike Cummings. And the Dons are on the board, one nothing. And throughout the course of the week, that's what Coach Paul had the guys doing in practice, working on their blocking and their defense, and so far it's paid off. Two stuff blocks here in a row. Soto with the kill attempt, saved by a ball state. Nice up. It's saved by Scott Lane there. And bounces off the hands of Ruiz, side out to Ball State. So far, IPFW has come out with great defensive attitude, touching every ball. It's gonna pay off for them here in the long run. 
Tom Tegerhoff with the serve. Ball State with the save. And the block attempt goes wide. Point for the Cardinals and we're tied at one. Great shot there by Brian Hughes, the senior for Ball State, leading the team in kills this year. Nice save by the Cardinals. A little miscommunication between Lane and Gislin. Ball goes out. Point to Ball State. They're up now 2-1. Conventional serve. Nice dig by Cummings. Or make it Gislin, rather. Hector Soto with the kill. It's interesting, Ryan. The first two matches that we broadcast to start the season, the rallies were not as long as what we've seen here right in the opening game. And the intensity of these guys have picked up, obviously, from then, playing about a month or so ago. Strong kill by Ball State. Unreturnable by IPFW, and it's side out to the Cardinals. Serving will be Matt Denmark, a 6'8 freshman from Edmond, Oklahoma. Serve is long. And the serve goes back over to IPFW. 2-1 is our score, Ball State on top. Game one of a best of five match. Best of five set match, rather. Hector Soto jump serves. Jeff Patak, the kill attempt, saved by Ball State. Nice block. Chris Gislin. Makes it 2-2. IPFW touching a lot of balls off their block. Ball State running the middle a little bit. And so far, Mike Cummings and Angel Ruiz touching every ball. Serve is long by Soto. Side out to Ball State. Back to serve number 15, Brian Hughes. Brian Hughes. Should we say a 6-4 senior out of Salina, Ohio. We'll do the serving for Ball State. Another quick set. Soto with the kill. Hector Soto's come to play. He always does for the big matches. That's a great set there by Chris Gislin. Soto bombing out of the back row. Mike Cummings, 6'8", senior from Young America, Minnesota with the serve. Nice save by Soto. Tight coming. Smart play by Mark Lau of Ball State. Causes a side out to Ball State. Ball State offensively running the middle, seeing if they can get something against IPFW running the middle. To no avail so far. Nice kill by Ruiz. Angel Ruiz. Side out, Dons. Should be noted, Chris Gislin, if you notice when he's going back to serve here, he's got a little brace on his right hand. He injured his thumb in practice a couple days ago. He's going to the jump floater just long. He's having difficulty gripping the ball. His thumb a little sprained, so he's wearing a protective brace. Doesn't do the top spin jump serve anymore, so goes to the uh, jump floater there for a little trajectory on the ball. Here's Mark Lau serving for Ball State. Overpass. And it's point to the Cardinals. They retake the lead, 3-2. Lau, a 6'8 senior from Grace Lake, Illinois. Gislin with the set. Great touch. Soto and touching the net. Back row violation. Violated the three meter line or the 10 foot line. Attack from the back row. Point goes to Ball State. Well, they're saying the scoreboard says 5-2. I thought it was 4-2, but I'm sure they're correct. 
Nice change of pace hit by Scott Lane. Causes a side out. The score 5-2, Ryan, though this is a best of five, how important is it to win game one? Game one's crucial. It always is crucial to get off to a good start. If you're IPFW, of course, you want to keep the crowd involved in the match by winning the first game. If you're Ball State, of course, you'd like to take the home court advantage away by good. winning game one. Kill by Matt Denmark of Ball State. Side out to the Cardinals. Ball State running the backslide there to the middle. That's where the middle hitter, middle attacker will run behind the setter. Serve jump, jump serve by Jeff Robertson is long. So, so far, every serve for Ball State aimed towards Hector Soto. So obviously they're trying to perhaps wear him down serving wise. Angel Ruiz with the serve. Off the hand of Ruiz, so it's side out to the Cardinals. Again, if you're just joining us, it is 5-2 Ball State. Game one at the best of five match here tonight. Serve goes into the net, so it's side out to the Dons. Now Scott Lane will serve. He leads the IPFW team in service aces this season, 24 thus far. Unfortunately, that serve finds the net. We've had six consecutive side outs on serve attempts between the two teams. Denmark, conventional serve. Well, what do you call that? <laughs> High set there for uh, Hector. Tried to roll the ball over, unfortunately, just caught the uh, top end of the net. It's now 6-2. Good decision by Patak to let that ball go as it goes long. So far, some of Chris Kislin's sets out to the outside, left side for IPFW have been a little low or a little too high, so we'll have to keep a, an eye on the thumb situation and see how that progresses throughout the night. Hector Soto, jump serve. Great serve. It's some English on it. Goes wide point to the Dons, a needed point. Makes it 6-3. Dons trail by three. Good look at Hector Soto. Servers long, however. Ryan, you're still close with this team. Has Hector fully recovered from last year's injury? Yeah, he, he's recovered. He's 100%. He's you know, he, he had the surgery last year after that devastating ankle injury. He's back and he's ready to play volleyball. Great wipe there what by Chris. What a move by Chris Gislin. Oh, uh, no touch. They're calling it no touch. Gislin trying to wipe the ball off of the uh, Ball State player. Fortunately, uh, Ball State blocker didn't go for it. Just working on Hector still. Patak off nice. the block. Nice shot there by Jeff. Patak. Now we got the side out by PFW. Mike Cummings will be serving. Nice block, block. between Ruiz and Patak. Point to the Dons, it's now seven to four. Another great block there by the Dons. Yes, sir. Nice serve there by Cummings. Back set, just long. Yep. Point to IPFW. It's now seven to five, little momentum change, slight as it may be in the favor of for the home team. We'll do. Service ace for Mike Cummings. Makes it seven six, and you can see the indecision there. So whether or not that serve should be returned or not. Great deep float serve by Cummings, right into the corner. Good kill by Mark Lau, however, from Ball State. Forces a side out to the Cardinals. Well, we 
momentary break as the ball streams onto the floor. Jump served by Doug Market. Good save by the Cardinals. Soto with the set. The tax kill attempt is long, however. Point to Ball State. It is now eight to six in favor of the Cardinals. Another jump serve. Service error. Service error. Side out to IPFW. Chris Gislin to serve for IPFW now. Let's see if he goes to the top spin here. Yep, top spin on the jump. Were they ruling it inside? IPFW questioning the call. The ball was passed outside the antenna on the uh, Ball State attack there. Now you got players from both teams questioning. You get a look there at Jeff Robertson of Ball Either State. The we got the ball. Either we official can call it. Either line, either line judge can call it. Either one. Either one. Well, they've given the point to IPFW. Makes it eight to seven. Server tip tips the top of the net, so it's now side out to Ball State. Serving number two, Mark Lau. Mark Lau will serve. Overpass. Nets touch, point to the Cardinals. Makes it 9-7. Lau with a jump serve. There's a good pass. X play. Oh, they're going to call IPFW. They're going to say Patak hit the, the net, net with the shoulder. Instead of side out to the Dons, it's now point to the Cardinals, and they now lead 10 to 7. Nice hit by Patak, Patone for that error the moment before. Great shot there by Jeff. So far, IPFW, they look a little flat. They don't look like they have come out with the intensity that I thought they would tonight. Fortunately, the match is still early. Oh, nice play there. Change of pace by Robertson. And then now he gets to serve for his good deed. Surprised that there haven't been any uh, substitutions of note for either team yet? No, this is this is a six so far, so that's the wide. So far going with the, the main gun so far. Service ace attempt is wide, so it's side out to the Dons. Ruiz will serve. Let's see if IPFW can get something going here on Ruiz's jump serve. Quick set again, great nice touch block. by Cummings. Oh, the change of pace by Matt Denmark. Back to serve number well, you see Ball State's strategy. They want to serve Hector Soto, and they want to run everything in the middle so far. Keep IPFW guessing. Hector Soto with the kill. Gives the serve over to IPFW in the person of Scott Lane. 6'8", senior out of Huntington Beach, California. Go, Wicked serve. Point to IPFW, it's now 10-8. Serve is wide, so it's side out to the Cardinals. Denmark to serve. Just 
Boston with the set. Lane. Nice kill by Scott Lane. Great shot. He found the corner there. Scott loves the D set out of, out of the far right side in the back row. Hector Soto getting ready to jump serve. Nice touch. Just not high enough to play it off the net by Hector. Side out to Ball State. Brian Hughes to serve. Conventional serve. Nice dig. And it's point to Ball State. Makes it 11-8. As Tegethoff gets credit for the kill. Side out here, right side out. Behind, behind. Nice kill by Lane. Shot there by Scotty. Side out, IPFW. Right now, Ball State have gotten the home the crowd out of the, uh, the match with their play so far. So far, it's so good. They're up on IPFW. IPFW looking for a spark. Hopefully, Mike Cummings could get it done again with another ace. There's a, another Tag team block. backslide. Just out of the reach of the IPFW defenders. Doug Market will now serve for Ball State. They lead 11-8 here in game one. Ball touches the net, so it's side out to the Dons. Chris Gislin to serve. Cardinals. Market sneaks it through the three-man wall there. That time IPFW wow. didn't get their hands over the net. The ball able to trickle through to their side for a side out to Ball State. Momentary delay while some perspiration is wiped up. Now we'll see the serve of Mark Lau. Nice block. Robertson and Denmark combined. Makes it 12-8. Timeout is called by IPFW. 12-8 is our score. Uh, IPFW trails. We'll be back in just a moment. I really wanted to go for an Indiana University business degree. But with housing and tuition, it really adds up, and the money just wasn't there to go away to college. And with a two-year-old, my housing options were kind of limited anyway. And the truth is, I really wanted to keep my job and stay close to home. Going to IPFW made all of that possible. IPFW? The best choice I ever made. Indiana University. Purdue University. Fort Wayne. The right school, right here, right now. Welcome back to the Gate Sports Center, everybody. Mike Miles, Ryan Perot with you. Game one of this best of five match, uh, set match between Ball State and IPFW. Serve goes wide by Ball State, set out to the Dons. It is 12-8 in favor of Ball State. Jeff Patak will now serve. What do you think Ernie said to them in the timeout? He didn't say nothing. He, uh... Well, he knows the guys right now. They're not up right now, and uh, he sat for about half of the time out uh, by himself, letting the guys compliment themselves. I mean, this is a, this is a senior team. Th these guys know that they're not playing well right now, and Ball State is being able to uh, 
to answer each of their runs. So they got to they got to spark it themselves. You know, Coach Ball can't be the spark all the time. The players have to do it, and I think they know that, and they have to get it together here in the latter stages of Game One. Ruiz with the serve. Gesson with the set, attack with the kill. There's the one play. Big point for IPFW, it's now 12 to nine. People have to understand that volleyball is a game of momentum and just the littlest thing could get the spark going and all of a sudden a blaze. Jump serve by Ruiz. Nice block by Cummings. Let's see what happens here. Another block, but it goes wide. So it'll be Tegahoff to serve. Tom Tegahoff, 6'6 junior out of St. Louis, Missouri. Chasing into our area. Fortunately, it is, I believe, point to Ball State. Makes it 13-9. Chris Gislin's having some difficulty setting the high, the high ball outside to Hector. I mean, those balls are really high, and they're about two or three feet out of bounds. Let's see what happens here. Here's Hector. That's a better Big set kill. there. Better set there. Those two have to get on the same page. Now it'll be side out to IPFW. Scott Lane will serve. Overpass. Handheld ball. Or they say net touch. No, nope, they're going to call Cummings for a violation there. Over the net, the setter went to set the ball. And he simultaneously contacted it, so it's a violation IPFW. Denmark serving for the Cardinals. Big kill. Lau and Market combined. Makes it 14-9, game point for Ball State. And Ball State's a very good blocking team. Mark Lau is ninth in the nation. And uh, Denmark is eighth in the nation. Soto with a big kill. Let's see if they can save it. Nope. Don, stave off. Game point number one. Mike Cummings to serve, conventional serve. Nice block, Soto and Ruiz take team it. Makes it 14-10, favor of Ball State, but the Dons have the serve. Great block there by Hector. One on one with the stuff block, and now there's gonna be a question about the rotation. Of Ball State. See if we can listen in here. Point to nine and, and uh, side out. out. Yeah. Side out over here. So a uh, mistake in the rotation cost the Dons a point. Cost them the serve. The 13 is right back right now. Correct. Get a look at second year coach Joel Walton for Ball State. Back Ryan to game Hughes. point now for IPFW. Shot there. Scott Wayne with the kill. Excuse me, for Ball State, IPFW is out of rotation, so it's a side out to Ball State. Cummings serving. The lock attempt goes wide. Another game point opportunity for the Cardinals. Nice shot there by Brian Hughes, tooling the block. 
Doug Market will serve for game number one. Good kill by Lau. Game one goes to Ball State by a score of 15-9. We'll take a short break, and when we come back, a conversation with IPFW Athletic Director Walt Bowman. To remind us that we can reach whatever we want. I'm proud to be an American because I'm free. And I can dream and choose what I want to be. Frank Morales, an American star, ready to shine, given the chance. Hispanic Scholarship Fund, opening American minds. Less crime is no accident. Programs are keeping kids away from crime. It takes you and programs that work. Call now and help take a bite out of crime. Yeah, I'll take it. Welcome, welcome back to the Gates Sports Center. We're between games one and two of our volleyball match, and with us is Athletics Director Walt Bowman and Dr. Bowman. Mighty big basketball game coming up tomorrow here at IPFW. Well, you know, it's it's an absolutely huge game, and I really appreciate the opportunity to be on here. I just want to talk to all of the folks that are out there watching it. We're pleased, first off, that you're watching this game tonight with Ball State. We will come back and win. But tomorrow, uh, our men's team has already qualified to go to the conference tournament, which is the first time in ages. But tomorrow, if our women win, they will qualify for the first time in the last seven or eight years. And I really hope that those of you that are out there in the viewing public will come on over to the Gate Center tomorrow at 1230 and really watch this remarkable team of virtually all freshmen who have just battled. Not only tomorrow, if they win, will they go to the conference playoff, but for the first time in the last four years, they will actually be at the 500 level. And for a coach that came in, didn't even get here until August, and is going with the primarily a, a, an all freshman cast, they deserve all of the credit. It's also senior for both men and women's tomorrow. So for those of you that are out there, please come and join us. We'd love to have as many people here tomorrow as we have tonight. Thanks again for having me. Thank you, Dr. Appreciate Bowman. It. Okay. Again, we're talking about basketball tomorrow here at IPFW as IPFW plays host to Quincy University. Women's game will start at 1 p.m., the men's game at 3 p.m. And again, uh, spot in the conference tournament on the line for the women. Ryan Peratt, game one, you're the tactician. What are these coaches saying to their teams for game well, two? Well, for Coach Walton, he's pretty pleased. Uh, team able to come in here and beat uh, IPFW on the road, taking game one. If you're coach ball, obviously, you're uh, very displeased. Uh, it looked like the IPFW had no intensity out there, and uh, you're, you're not going to be able to win. You, you can't take these t these teams for granted, even though they may be lesser uh, by record or what have you. So um, coach ball is probably firing up the troops now, so they get ready for game two. we got the first game numbers in front of us. What stats stand out? Well, the biggest stat is the hitting percentage of each team. Uh, ball State hitting 36%, IPFW uh, 9%. Um, so obviously you cannot win when you're only hitting 9% in a volleyball match. Plus IPFW, nine service errors uh, in game one and no service aces. And, and that's the key for IPFW. You know, we talked about it uh, in, our, in our first telecast. Uh, IPFW, when they serve well, uh, they are a very hard team to beat. And uh, that was sort of their slump when they went to Hawaii. They lost a couple tight matches. A lot of service errors. Uh, and, and their six game winning streak, they, they limited that, got a lot of service aces, and now they're back to the uh, to the same thing, more service errors over aces. You want about a three to one ratio. Cardinals start the game with the serve. Robertson hits the net, and right away it's side out to the Dons. Plus some of the guys off IPFW now, they have to start stepping up. Jeff Patak only hitting 14%. Uh, uh, Mike Cummings into the negative digits. So these guys have to start stepping up. There's a service ace. Service ace by Ruiz. And the Dons jump out on front one zip. Hector Soto as well, only hitting about 17%. So um, 
it's a team effort, and uh, everybody on IPFW has to step up here in game two. Jump serve. Nice kill by Tegenhoff. And Tam will get to serve now for the Cardinals. Gistlin with the set. Soto, nice dig. Good block, good play by Scott Lane. Side out, Dons. You should get a good look at freshman Matt Denmark of Ball State. Kill by Doug Market, turns the ball serve over to Ball State. Market able to uh, split the seam. Gislin with the set. Net violation. Side out to IPFW. Side out. Ryan, in a game like this, when you're in the heat of action, when you're serving, when do you decide to aim for an area as opposed to hitting another player? Well, Coach Midland is uh, the assistant coach for IPFW. He's calling out the serving assignments. And what you want to do, they want to work on a player, break them down. IPFW does. And so far, you know, they're looking on number eight, Doug Market. See whenever he's in there, see if they can uh, get at him. You want to try to serve the seams or somewhere out wide, cause a little confusion for balls aren't that easy to handle. I would hit with a twist by Jeff Patak. Side out, IPFW. Six consecutive side outs here on serve attempts. Serving is the key because it's the first way to get a point. You know, if you serve tough, you can get an ace. Or play easy balls like this one right here. Good play by Patak. Makes it 2 nothing, IPFW. Mike Cummings with the serve. Side out to Ball State. Hector Soto called for a throw there. Double contact. That's what I was waiting for. <laughs> Still serving Hector. Side out to the Dons. Nice shot there by Ruiz. Good effort by Market for Ball State, but to no avail. Doug Market, one of my Canadian buddies. Canada, that uh, great state to the north. <laughs> Jump serve. It is long. And it is now 3 nothing in favor of IPFW. It's great sneaky serve there by Gislin. He was going for the top spin, but then he hits it like he wants to jump float it, get the ball flat. This time he goes over top with the top spin. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Good kill by Tegethoff. Not a returnable. And it's side out to the Cardinals. Nice dig there by Lopez, the uh, libero for Ball State. He's had about four sweet digs tonight. Mark Lau. Change of pace attempt by Denmark, hits the net. Side out, Dons. Jeff Patak, who's probably played the best of anybody on the court so far tonight, now serving. As soon as I say it, the kiss of death, serves goes right into the net. Into the net. YPFW up 3-0 here, so obviously it's a good start here in game two after losing game one. They just got to maintain the momentum. This crowd is ready to erupt for a good play, and IPFW has to provide it. They say the return was in. Side out to the Dons. And Walton disagreeing. Point. Questionable call there as the uh, top official, Dan Hauser, overruled. 
side out to IPFW. Ruiz with a jump serve. Nice block there by Cummings. Tight set. Nice kill. Makes it 4 nothing, and now the crowd's starting to get That's into right. it. This is one of the biggest crowds of the year. At least 1,500 people here. They want something good to happen for IPFW. They're willing to support IPFW in any means necessary. 4 nothing, Dons. And Ruiz again with the jump serve. Good kill that time by Hughes. Side out, Ball State. Interference on the part of Denmark, I think. No, back row setter, Chris Gislin. Back row setter tried to play the ball over. Above the net, can't do that when you're a back row attack. Makes it 4-1. Nice shot there by Patak the going down the line. When you're in the back row, just exactly how far up can you go? As the, uh, as the setter, uh, Chris Gislin was in the back row and he went to set the ball and the ball went over the net. So that's a violation, setter cannot do that from the back row. Scott Lane, jump serves. Good dig. Patak, thanks to the set by Soto. And it's 5-1 IPFW. Good kill that time by Denmark. Side out, Ball State. Both these middles for Ball State, very active. So far seeing a lot of sets here in the early portion of this match. Nice change of pace by IPFW. Gislin has to do that, he's gonna get active. Now he's in the front row, he can attack that time going with the setter's dump. He has to be active for IPFW in the front row. Soto with the jump serve. And it's just long. Side out Cardinals. Brian Hughes to serve. Good dig by Soto. Can they save it? Attack. Get what's up. Successful. Side out Dons. Hector Soto with a nice dig there. Great dig, that started the play. Great wipe shot by Patak, who's picked up his game here in game two. Cummings with the serve. Backslide. Net violation? Yep. On Hell Ruiz into the net. Side out, Ball State. Market will serve. Again, one of your Canadian buddies from Maidstone, Ontario. Essex District has got to be near Windsor. Near my hometown, about uh, 30 minutes or so from Windsor. Side out to the Dons there. How much is that hand bothering him, you think? Well, he practiced with it yesterday, looked pretty good. There's a great serve there out wide. Nice shot there. It, any sprained finger, as uh, we've known from playing and so forth. Uh, it does affect the way that you play, but your adrenaline is pumping right now. And, uh, you know, pop a couple Advil or Tylenol, what have you, and the, the pain is gone. So I don't think it's much of a factor now here in game two. Lau with the serve, Pachak with the kill. Side out, IPFW. As evident by that great set there by Gislin. And Patak smashes it to the court. And he gets the serve. 5-1, Don's on top. Jeff going to two. the float serve there. Good. Was that Soto or was that uh, Soto Ruiz? with the fly swat there. Ball State player trying to dig the ball over the net. Of course, Soto with his great hang time. No soup for you. 6-1. Boy, if that hit the net, I didn't see it, but uh, the official said it did. Side out, Ball State. 
Robertson, the setter, with the serve. Nice shot by Ruiz. Coach Ball worked on that a lot during practice this week, getting the middles involved. So far, both Gislin and Cummings and Ruiz are on the same page. On Hill with his fourth kill. Nice kill by Denmark, thanks to the nice set by Robertson. Side out Cardinals. What you can do, I can do better. Says Denmark. Serve is wide, however. Serve goes back over to the Dons. Couldn't tell that IPFW was up 6-1 here. The crowd sort of silent. Scott Lane, jump serve. Violation. Guess they hit the net. No, Cummings hit the net there. Tried to hit the overpass, and the setter brought it back. Got fish hooked there into the net. Side out to the Cardinals. 6-8, Matt Denmark with a serve. Boy, a lot of net violations here. Ball stayed there into the net. Side out, IPFW. Hector Soto. I expect to see a jump serve more than likely. Maybe with some mustard on it. The high toss of Soto is trademark. Unfortunately, that one's long. Carried wide. Serve goes back over to Ball State. Brian Hughes to serve. Six ones our score. IPFW on top here in game two. Lane's kill attempt goes long. And it's now six to two. Scotty's looking for a touch there. No one saw it, they're calling it long. I thought there was a touch too off the block. Everybody missed it. Except Scott. <laughs> Server's long, so it's side out to the Dons. Cummings will serve. Good dig. Gislin with the set. Kill attempt goes wide by Market. And it's 7-2. Great heat by Lane there coming out of the back row right side. Loves the D set, tooling Market off the block. Oh, it landed in. to the dismay of Joel Walton. 8-2 our score, Ball State calls timeout. You too can participate in the excitement of Mastodon Athletics by joining the Royal Dons Athletic Association. The Royal Dons is IPFW's official athletic booster organization. Members enjoy benefits such as priority seating at IPFW sports events, food and refreshments in the hospitality room, for more information about the Royal Dons, call 219-481-6958 or write to Royal Dons Athletic Association, 2101 East Coliseum Boulevard, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805. Good look at the crowd here at the Hillier Gate Sports Center on this Friday night, a warm Friday night in February. 8-2, Dons on top, can they sustain momentum? Looks like they can. They, uh, with, with every Ball State challenge, IPFW so far in this game, able to meet it and match that, and now opening up a six point lead in game two. Again, both teams coming into this match eight and four overall. The Dons five and one in MIVA play, Ball State two and two. Point to IPFW, confusion at the net. Three successive points on serve, Ryan. That 
However, that serve is long, side out, Ball State. And as you say that, as you see Coach Ball not pleased with that, because that's a momentum killer. Got to serve the ball into the court. You've scored three points. Got to make Ball State make the error. Market with the serve. It's saved by Hughes. Hard swing coming here. Surprise, Robertson the setter with the kill. Makes it 9-3 now. IPFW with the lead. And IPFW calls timeout. Well, you can see the emotional coach Ernie Ball wanting to implore words of instruction to his team. And what he's telling the guys is hey, they got to play at their level that they're capable of playing. You know, they're on a six match win streak. They've played good volleyball during those six games. And, you know, you can't come down to the level of Ball State. I'm not saying I'm not putting, you know, Ball State down or anything, but IPFW, they're ranked eighth in the nation. And they have to play like they're the eighth ranked team in the nation. Bring IPFW head men's volleyball coach Ernie Ball into your home each Wednesday and Thursday evening this season. Arnie joins assistant coach Mark Franke to review the Valley Don's progress, discuss highlights, meet with players, and look ahead to upcoming volleyball action. So tune in to the Arnie Ball Show Wednesday evenings at 9 and Thursday evenings at 7 right here on College 56. And just to finish that thought, that's what makes championships teams. You know, you have to play at the level that you are capable of playing. I mean, IPFW is the eighth ranked team in the country. And they have to play like that. And right now, uh, little emotion, little intensity, and coach obviously is not pleased with it. Patak gets the friendly roll off the net. Side out, IPFW. See if they can take advantage of that good fortune. Chris Gislin with the jump serve. Say it's wide. Kill, side out, Dons. Ruiz having a very good night in the middle for IPFW. Jeff Patak with the serve. Good save. Oh. Good effort by Soto. Unfortunately, it's side out, Ball State. Try there by Panos de Cleus. The Libero for uh, IPFW leads the team in Dicks this season. Well, for the first time tonight, we hear a rhythmic chant here in the crowd. Jeff Robertson, the center, serving for Ball State. Nice block. Lane and Ruiz tag team, side out IPFW. IPFW blocking a lot of balls tonight. Something coach worked on during the week, it's paying off for them here tonight. Ruiz, conventional serve. Side out, ball state. Use tooling lane there. Tom, take it off to serve. Okay, oh. attempt wide. Point to Ball State, it is now nine to four in favor of IPFW. Good dig. Soto with the kill. Great up by Chris Gislin. Bad hand and all. Great pancake there. Saving the play for IPFW and Soto putting it away. Scott Lane now with the California jump serve. Good dig. We'll set mark it again. See ya. Yeah. 
He's a talented junior out of Maidstone on, let's see, Edmond, Oklahoma. Freshman, I'm sorry. Denmark, the freshman out of Oklahoma. And Market last year had a very threatening injury. He hurt his ankle. He slipped on a wet spot playing against Lewis, and he uh, dislocated his ankle, shattered it. Able to come back this year and play effectively for the Cardinals. Net violation, point ball state. They have a new server in, Craig Madison, a 6'5 freshman from Naperville, Illinois, Chicago suburb. Now three points here in a row for the Cardinals. A little momentum on their side. And there's Soto with the kill. Soto hushes that thought. Nice twisting set by Gislin, too. Substitution, Denmark back in a lineup, replacing Madison for Ball State. Both setters doing a nice job of distributing the ball around. Soto with the serve. And it's long. Two successive long serves by Hector Soto on his serve. Side out. Brian Hughes to serve now for the Cardinals. Net violation to Ball State, so IPFW gets the serve back. Good look at Mike Cummings. Nice block by Mr. Gislin. Sweet stuff there by Gislet. Pressing hard, taking the angle shot away from Market. Makes it 10-5 in favor of IPFW. Block attempt is wide, however. So it's side out, Ball State. And now making his first appearance of the night, number 12, Kyle Wendell, 6'8 freshman out of St. Louis, Missouri. Serving will be Doug Market. Going to stay down here with the float serve. Still working on Soto. Good dig. Change of pace. Side out, IPFW. Great shot by Hector. That great disguise shot of his with the roll shot over the top of the block. I call it a yo-yo shot because you're <laughs> expecting the hard slam. That's kill. right. The defenders of the, the Cardinals on their heels, expecting some heat from Soto, and he pulls the string. Gislin serve hits the net, however, so it's side out right back to the Ball State Cardinals. That just makes you such a great player. He had so many shots, so many options. Mark Law with the serve. The shot. Lock is wide, so it's side out for the Dons. And Jeff Patak will serve for IPFW. Good effort by Chris Gislin, but the uh, ball hits the floor. Serve goes back over to Ball State. Robertson to serve. His team trails 10-5 here in game number two. Ball State won the first game. Misfire by Scott Lane. Makes it 10-6. Nice kill that time. Ruiz gets the better of it. Great set again by Gislin into the middle to Ruiz. He's having a monstrous game for IPFW. In jump serve posture. Angel Ruiz serving. Tight set. Point to the dance. Nice play by Soto. Soto and Cummings there for the block on that low set. Makes the score 11 to six. 
in favor of the Valley Dons. Ruiz once again with a jump serve. Gipsy Dew. And Denmark is successful with the kill and they get the side out. Take it off to serve. Good dig. Gislin with the set. Soto with the kill. Side out, IPFW. Now the set's to the uh, left side for IPFW. Gislin starting to get the ball where he needs to get it for both Soto and Patak to put the ball away. Give them something good to swing at. Lane with the jump serve. Off the fingertips of Lane. Side out once again to Ball State. Another substitution. Brent Scholes, 6'7", sophomore from Franksville, Wisconsin. Replaces Doug Market. And serving for the Cardinals will be Matt Denmark. The Oklahoma freshman. Tack with the dig. Guess them with the set. Point to Ball State, however. Nice solid block there by the Cardinals. Loading up on Hector there. Makes it 11-7, Cardinals within four. Again, perspiration on the floor. This is where IPFW has to get the killer instinct. You break the uh, 10 point mark, got to be able to put teams away. They want to give Ball State a chance here in game two. Serve goes into the net, so it's side out for the Dons. A little freebie for the Dons. Let's see if they can capitalize. Soto, after missing two jump serves in a row, he'll stay down now with the float serve. Nice dig. Block is wide, point to the Dons. Great play there by Iraklaeus. Nice dig, and Patak able to tool the block there. Great up by the uh, libero. Good heads up play. Makes it 12-7. Dons within three points of winning game number two. Another float serve. Touch off the Good net. Good save by Patak. Good play. Patak, Cummings and company. Point for the Dons, they now lead 13-7. Ball State calls timeout. Learn more about Mastodon Sports in season by tuning into Mastodon Spotlight each Wednesday evening on College 56. Yours truly will review the sport week sports activities, look at some game footage, and talk with coaches on the program. That's Mastodon Spotlights, Wednesday evenings at 8.30, right here on College 56. Well, 13-7. You see some of the nice cheerleaders on the floor exhorting the fans on. Try to catch an earshot of what Coach Walton was saying to his Ball State team. Here's a replay, Ryan, of that last point, I believe. Replay the last point put away there at the end. Great defensive play started it. The previous point, uh, Pato Cleus with the dig. The last play, Hector Soto with the dig off the net. IPFW able to convert. That's what IPFW needs. They need to get the, uh, be able to convert those dig opportunities and the point scoring opportunities. And they're doing that here in the latter stages of game two. We're ready for a play again. Soto with the float serve. Good dig. Oh, oh just wide, but a great effort. Wow, what a dig by Pados, that one. So we call some lip service in the back right there. 
Sticking out the left hand. Unbelievable reaction there. Brian Hughes with the serve. Patak with a, I'm sorry, making Scott Lane with a solid kill. And, and now you can tell that the guys of IPFW, they're into it now. You know, the intensity's there, good things are happening, they're working hard, and it's paying off for IPFW. Mike Cummings to serve. Nice dig by Soto. Good effort by Jeff Patak, it just wasn't successful. IPFW digging everything now. Ball State's gonna have to try to find a way to put the ball to the floor. Because right now Soto and Hila Clayus are digging everything in the back row. Robertson with the set. Nice block! Unfortunately it goes wide. Gislin's almost had to block. But it is point to Ball State instead, and it's now 13 to eight. Nice kill by Jeff Patak. Side out to IPFW. You sense a, a sense of urgency on IPFW right now to wrap this game up? Yeah, they want to they get with this one over. They know it's going to be a long night. Let's finish this one as soon as possible and get to game three. Keep the momentum going. Good kill by Robertson. Wow, another great dig by Soto there, sticking out his left arm. Good things happening for IPFW. They're touching balls, making ball state play an extra ball or two. Mark Lau with the serve. It is long. Slide out to the Dons again. Wow, the crowd's getting into it. The momentum, obviously, on IPFW side. They can finish it up here, get two points, move on to game three, and keep it going. Jump serve by Patak. Point to the Dons. It is now game point, 14-8. Crowd on its feet. Chance for 15 here. Set by Ruiz. Oh, and a good block by Denmark. Side out Cardinals. Robertson to serve. Serve is long. Another game point attempt coming up for IPFW. Two service errors in a row there by the Cardinals. Angel Ruiz to serve for game two. Good dig by Patak. Point to the Dons, game two. It is over, 15-8 our score. Games are even at one apiece. 15-9 Ball State in the first, 15-8 IPFW in the second. Now it comes down to a best of three. Let's take a break here on College 56 Sports. We'll be back in just a moment. Allowing me 60 seconds of your time. Since August of this academic year, you have both read and heard of our drive for Division I status. The executive board of the Royal Dons Athletic Association, our associates in Business 100, and hundreds of constituents like yourself have all joined together with a single purpose, Division I Athletics for you and the Fort Wayne community. At present, we are exploring many possibilities for potential conference affiliation, along with expanding the base programs offered. Recently, the faculty approved the addition of men and women's indoor and outdoor track, bringing our offerings to 16 varsity programs. I believe that when we are an NCAA Division I program, 
Each of you watching this television program tonight will have an opportunity to view firsthand the Hoosiers, Boilermakers, and the Fighting Irish here in Fort Wayne and at the Coliseum and at the University. In order to move our vision from the dream stage to reality, we need to continue to attract strong alumni and community support. Fort Wayne, the second largest city in the state, is deserving of a Division I program which reflects the community's greatness. Together, you and I are positioned to form an alliance which will give the citizens of Northeast Indiana even more reason to show our... And pleased to pronounce, uh, to hand out to Coach Terry a top 25 senior college men Division II plaque, number eight in the nation. Sports Center, Mike Miles and Ryan Perrot with you. As we are in a break between. Also, in the moment of honoring people, we'd like to wish happy birthday to Coach Leslie Johnson, assistant women's volleyball coach, who says she's 29. Welcome, today. welcome back, everybody. Mike Miles and Ryan Perrot with you. We are between games two and three here in our best of five match between IPFW and Ball State. Ball State won the first game 15, uh, eight, 59 rather, and IPFW gave, won game two 15 to eight. Just had a presentation made to the IPFW men's soccer team, which had a tremendous year. Made it to the Elite Eight in NCAA Division II action. Ryan, we got the numbers from, uh, from game two. Much better numbers if you're an IPFW fan. Absolutely, IPFW. They're blocking uh, 20 blocks through game two. They're all blocking uh, Ball State. Ball State has 10 blocks. And uh, IPFW 30 digs to Ball State's 22. But you look at the individual statistics is what step out. After game one, Jeff Patak was only hitting 14%. After game two, he's hitting 55%. He's got 14 kills and 20 attempts. Same with Hector Soto, only hitting about 17% in game one. He's up to 11 kills now, hitting 21%. And of course, Angel Ruiz has uh, five kills in eight attempts as well. So IPFW, Chris Gislin distributing the ball well, around very well. And uh, the, each player stepped up after the loss in game one. Now it's a best of three. The teams have seen each other, felt each other out. During this 10 minute break, what do the coaches say to the teams? Well, if you're coach ball, you got to keep the momentum. Uh, right now they have it off, obviously. Uh, you don't want to lapse against Ball State because obviously we know how good Ball State uh, can be at times. Uh, got to continue to do what you're doing. You know, you're blocking, you're playing defense very well. Serving, I'm sure he'd like to see that improve. Get the assist ratio, uh, the ace ratio up. Uh, and cut down on the service errors. If you're Coach Walton for Ball State, you gotta get back to the basics and what won you game one. You know, you served aggressively, you were able to play good defense, both middles were active, and Brian Hughes was able to put the ball away there. So, uh, Jeff Roberts in the center for Ball State, he'll have to start thinking on what his game plan's gonna have to be setting the ball to uh, his other teammates. In game one, you noted that Ball State was attacking Hector Soto. Uh, we're going to get a look at a replay momentarily. It looks like they went away from that a little bit in game two. Did they go back to it? As we see a replay here. We see here. a replay here of, uh, I believe, game point. Game point. Jeff Patak there sneaking it through the uh, block. And Jeff Patak came alive there. And, uh, yeah, Ball State got away from serving Hector Soto a little bit and serving Jeff Patak, and he got to see a lot of balls. And that perhaps got him into his rhythm. That's probably why he had an outstanding game two. Uh, if you're Ball State, you might want to work on that. That's the conventional theory anyway. Serve Hector Soto, see if you can tire him out, wear him out. Uh, you know, he's, he's second in the nation in kills. Um, so perhaps they want to go back to that. They want to also get back to running the middles. In game one, uh, both middles for the Cardinals were able to put the ball away effectively. They sort of got away from that in game two, going to their outsides a little bit more, especially Brian Hughes, who saw a lot of balls. So if you're Ball State, you got to get back to what won you game one. If you're IPFW, you got to continue the momentum that you just took out of game two and keep that going for the next three, two matches, two games. For the novice viewer who's just maybe tuning in for the first time tonight, 
when you use the term running the middle, what exactly do you mean? Set the middle. Set the middle and make the middle run all over. You know, you got the tight sets, the tight quicks, the Bs. You could also run them behind like Ball State was doing, behind the setter, those back slides. Also run some spread in the middle. You know, you can run the, uh, uh, in the front row rather, run the spreads. You can either run the A sets, or you're about three feet or so from the setter. Middles have to be active. You got to run different things so you keep the defense guessing. With emotions high as this rivalry produces tremendous emotion, the fact that neither team has substituted very much. We saw Ball State with a couple of substitutions there in game two, and I haven't seen IPFW make a, a move yet tonight. How important is the bench for these final three games? Well, you gotta have a deep bench in order to win, and so far, uh, both teams sticking to their main guns. That's what got them here. They're, you know, they know how vital this game is in conference play. So both teams going with their main guns, and uh, don't look to see many substitutions unless, of course, for injury. Uh, just to reiterate again how important this match is in MIV play, IPFW leading the MIVA with a 5-1 and one league record coming in. Ohio State and Lewis right behind, a half game behind at 4-1. and one. And then Ball State and Quincy are tied at 2-2 two and two with Mercyhurst and Loyola 1-4 and, and Clark 0-4. Oh and four. And, uh, and we've talked about it in our previous two matches, uh, and we've also talked about it with basketball as well, how important it is for a team to win on its home floor. Absolutely. Those are, those are almost gimme, like, uh, you know, the, the, the road team comes in, whether they travel the day, you know, they could have, uh, you know, bus legs or what have you. So it's very important that you win the matches at home, as tough as they may be, because every match in the uh, MIVA this year is tough. Uh, but you have to win on your home floor to have a good seating going into the conference tournament at the end of the year. And I know you and I talked before the start of the broadcast, not only is this a very important match, but next weekend, another match, a little bit of a revenge match as the Ohio State Buckeyes come to town and a little bit of payback perhaps because payback. the Buckeyes defeated IPFW yeah. earlier in the year. You know, we have a big crowd here tonight. Uh, we're gonna have a big one next Saturday night. Ohio State comes in here. Uh, a battle for first place, uh, revenge on everybody's mind. You know, Ohio State after losing uh, to us last year in the MIVA conference to go to the Final Four. This year, IPFW losing on the road in a tough five setter there at Ohio State. So, uh, you know, next Saturday will be a very huge, especially, you know, why that match is also big is because it's right before spring break and both teams are taking off LA. Uh, the Dons are off to LA to play in a Long Beach tournament and I know Ohio State's off to play somewhere as well. So. It's, it's a huge match for both teams, and of course, we'll talk about that a lot more come next Saturday night when Ohio State is here. When we look back, when we first broadcast the first two matches, the Dons played well. Then they went to Ohio State and lost. Then they get in an airplane and went to Hawaii and lost three tough matches to Hawaii, to number one ranked UCLA, and to Penn State. Looking back, how much did this team learn from those three losses out in Hawaii. I'm sure they, uh, they matured, I think, a lot. Uh, you know, obviously it's, it's never nice to lose, uh, but you have to take something away from those losses. And I think IPFW, you know, whether it was a high ranking or what have you, the travel schedule, the tough teams that you're playing out early, they learned a lot from, hey, you know, we have to be prepared to play every night. It doesn't matter against who it is, whether it's the number one ranked team in the country, UCLA, or whether it's the 10th team in the country, Ball State. You gotta be ready to play each and every night. That's how big these matches are. Well, our 10 minute break is just about over between games two and three, and we're gonna get this third game started. Checking some stat lines right quick. Uh, Brian Hughes, the leading kill man for Ball State. He's got 12 kills. Uh, both Tegenhoff and Denmark each have seven kills hitting around 300. Uh, Doug Market, four kills. Mark Lau, five kills as well with Jeff Robertson. The lead man for IPFW, uh, Jeff Pataki's got 14 kills. Hector Soto, 11, and Angel Ruiz has five. Yeah. And Scott Lane as well, he's got nine kills in 23 attempts. Same starters for both teams on the floor for game three. We'll see how that break affects both teams. 10 minute break. To me, the standard in between games two and three. Scott Lane will begin game three with the serve for IPFW. Here's the whistle.
Block attempt goes awry, so it's side out to Ball State right off the bat. Nice tool shot there by Teganoff. Swinging as hard as he can against the two Don blockers. Jeff Roberts in the center with the serve. Net touch, evidently. Side out, Don's. Hector Soto, let's see if he goes back to the jump serve. He will. Good dig by Gislin. Another dig. Great up by Scotty there. Long rally. Good block. Net touch, four touches. Side out, Ball State. Nice rally there. That was one of the longest rallies of the match so far. You don't see a lot of them in men's volleyball. A lot of the detonation, just swing away. A lot of siding out in men's volleyball. Tom Tegethoff serving for the Cardinals. Nice kill by Scott Lane. Unreturnable. So far, sorry. so far Ball State serving back now to Hector Soto. Seeing if they can wear him down here in game three. Mike Cummings, conventional serve. Nice block. Ruiz and Gislin tag team. And it is 1-0 Dons. Third game in a row that IPFW scored the first point of the game. Solid kill there from Brian Hughes. Matt Denmark, 6'8 freshman from Edmond, Oklahoma with the serve. It is just long. Chris Gislin. Free ball. Set. Good dig by the Cardinals to keep it alive. Good dig by Gislin. Nice set. Nice block there by the Cardinals. Mr. Hughes got his hands on it. Side out, Ball State. Brian Hughes, 6'4", senior out of Salina. Nice hit by Jeff Patak. One might think if opportunity knocks, we might get to talk to him later, possibly. He's played a very strong match for the Dons tonight. Overpass, which should be a point. It is wide, wide. They say touched now. So give the point to IPFW. Makes it two to nothing. It's going to land in. Nice. Great. Great dig, which turns into a kill by Mr. Chris Gislin. What a dig by Gislin. It's all reaction right there, and the crowd erupted. Hits him in the chest, gets the wing up, and it lands on the back line for a point for the Dots. Great play by Gislin. His defense has come alive in the last two games, and he's worked hard on it the last couple of years. Always thought it was a liability, but he has picked up his game defensively. That's SB material. <laughs> Ball State with the serve. Nice kill by Ruiz. Dons get the serve right back. Momentum is clearly on the side of the Dons. They've kept it in now from game two. Obviously that great play by Gislin helps with the crowd. A free nothing here. See if they can keep it rolling. Nice serve. Nice block. Coming in Soto tag team. 4-0 our score. 
23 total blocks for the Dots tonight. Outstanding. Server's long, however. Little miss hit there. So it is side out to the Cardinals. Mark Lau, the 6'8 senior from Grace Lake, Illinois, with the serve. Is that net interference? They're calling net interference. That's Makes a tough call. Uh, that's, a, that's a really tough call, because Gislin's up to set the ball. And the ball's over the net, and he's back row. He can't play it when the ball's crossed the net like that. That serve is into the net by the Cardinals. Side tough out. call, but I don't know. That's a questionable call. You've got to be able to go up as a setter and be able to set the ball, handle the ball, without interference on the other side. Scotty Lane serves that one long. So that's a tough call from the official. Of course, it's one of the tougher jobs. Glad I don't have to do it. <laughs> Get a good look there at the second year head coach of Ball State, Joel Walton. Good dig by Cummings. The tax kill attempt is long, however. And just like that, it is now four to two. Four nothing lead's been cut in half. Robertson with the jump serve, a wee bit long. So the ball sides out to IPFW. Now Hector Soto gets a chance to serve again. A lot of service errors here by both teams. Game three. Pivotal game here. Nice. nice play by Chris Gislin. Gislin up with the Statue of Liberty, the one arm setter. He just flicks it over. Over his wrist into the open four. Cummings with the serve. Nice serve there by Cummings. Long, so it is point to the Dons. Makes the score now five to two. Robertson with the set. Big attempt off of Soto. Makes it side out to Ball State. Matt Denmark with the serve. Long, side out to the Dons. Chris Gesslin now to serve. Nice block. Oh, nice roll shot. Perfect place to put it. Right between four Dons. We saw that earlier in the night from Soto. Everybody expecting heat and the same thing in this case. All the Dons back, expecting some hard heat and then pulling the string with a great roll shot that was. So it's side out to Ball State. They trail five to two here in game three. Games are even at one apiece. Brian Hughes. Tough serve. Makes it five to three. Serve barely clearer than that. That's how tough that one was. Good kill by Jeff Patak. Patak jamming it off the block on the back set. service errors for the Dons tonight. It's a lot of it, 
A lot of errors considering they only have two service aces. Just long. It is now five to four. The Cardinals crawl to within one. Solid kill by Soto. Over top that time by Soto. Such a great set Powerful. by Gislin. Powerful shot. I have Ruiz to serve. Good dig by Soto. Gets the kill. Hector saved it. Hector finished it. Great one hand set by Chris there, the ball. He's back row, he had to run all the way up to the net. Jump and set it one handed, perfect. Set to Soto, put it to the floor. Two in a row down for the Dons. Jump serve by Ruiz, he's it's in, service ace. Number three for IPFW. Seven to four is now the score. Side out, Ball State. Back to the middle, that's something we haven't seen a lot of in this game from Ball State. Robertson setting the middle. That time setting a successful middle kill. They're gonna have to do a lot of that if they wanna be successful. Mark Lau with the serve. Bit of a miss hit by Soto, makes it seven to five in favor of IPFW. Jump serve by Lau. Good play by Scott Wayne. Side out. Side out IPFW. Number 15, Scott. Scotty back to serve. He's seventh in the nation in serving. Last year's Miva MVP. Solid shot there, however, by Tegenhoff. Give side out to the Cardinals. And setter Jeff Robertson goes to the back line. Nice set. Touch on that play. Side out to the Dons. Boy, Ball State players looking bewildered. Shouldn't expect a lot of calls on the road. Float serve by Soto. Good dig by Gislin. Set by Hector. Patak puts it away. Interesting seeing Hector Soto in the role of a setter for a point. Yeah, got to be able to handle the ball, especially when Gislin plays the first ball up and is not able to set the second ball. Each one of these guys able to handle the, the duties of a setter. Wide and long, and another point to the Dons makes it nine to five. And timeout is called. Timeout. Be sure to tune into Cowwich 56 Sundays at noon and Friday evenings at eight in March, when host Melissa Long visits with IPFW business and management faculty members Prasad Binji, Joseph Kamala, and Jim Moore. Hope I pronounced those right. To get an in-depth look at e-commerce and how it may affect you or your business in the future. That's Sundays at noon and Fridays at 8 p.m. in March for IPFW Up Close, right here on Cowage 56. And if I mispronounce those names, I that do was apologize. Perfect. That was perfect. I have one of those professors for one of my classes, so. Well, it's the banker's score, Ryan, nine to five <laughs> in favor of the Dons. They seem to have momentum on their side, but what do they have to do to finish this game three off? Well, they got to cut down on their service errors, obviously. Uh, but so far, they're playing well. They're able to answer every run by Ball State. 
right now. They just got to push. They got to get some excitement into them. They've gotten a lot better at that from game one. But uh, they just got to get that killer instinct to say, hey, we're going to make you make a mistake. And as soon as you make that mistake, it's all over. Soto again with the float serve. Nice block. There is just one. Just Cummings. Three successive points in a row on serve for the Dons. And it's now 10 to 5. Coach Walton trying to find a, a group that could uh, make a comeback here. Doug Market comes back in the lineup, replacing Brent Schultz for Ball State. Again, that float serve by Hector Soto. Serve attempt is long. So it is point to the Dons. Now 11 to 5. Nice dig by Scott Lane. Good dig by Robertson. Ah, oh, they're great up. Long rallies. Patak. Saved by Hughes. Nice Woo! block. Point for the Dodge. Coming to this one again. It's huge. Longest rally of the match. And the point goes to IPFW. Great block by the Minnesota duo there. Gislin and Cummings, big stuff block. Both of them getting their arms over the net. Ball Twelve. landing before the Ball State attacker did. 12-5 now the score. Question, the two officials are, were talking and now one of them's talking to some of the fans over on the other side of the floor. Perhaps telling some of the fans to, uh, hey, we don't mind you cheering, but uh, let's keep it positive. Tool shot right next to your head. Yeah, my wife would say, go ahead and hit it, and knock some sense into it. Side out to Ball State after a nice five-point rally there by the Dons. But, whoa, nice dig and save. Wow, Lopez, nice up for Ball State. Again. Wow. Gislin with the set, the twist. Point. The side out to the Dons. Two tremendous rallies in the last three serves. The libero for Ball State. Lo Lopez with a couple unbelievable digs at some hard heat. And Chris Gislin, so smart, says, hey, how about a little... Dump over my head, see if you can get that one. Cummings with the serve. Good Ooh. block by Gislin. Well, IPFW is on a roll now, blocking everything, digging everything. Huge stuff block there by Gislin again. Makes the score 13 to five, two points away from victory in game three. Nice play between Patak and Ruiz. Patak with the one hand fly swat there and IPFW is rolling up 14-5 here in game three. Ball State calls a timeout, hopes to change the momentum. See the teams meeting at their respective benches. Again, a nice crowd on hand here at the Hilliard Gate Sports Center tonight. What we ought to do is lock the doors and have these people stay for the basketball <laughs> games tomorrow. Huge basketball games tomorrow. I know the women's team, they play at 1 o'clock tomorrow. Big match for them. If they win, they're in the tournament. It's been a great turnaround for the women's team under head coach Carl Samesco. Last year, they were 2-25. and 25. This year, they are 12-13, and 13. and with the break or two, Realistically, they could very easily, instead of being 12 or 13, Absolutely. they could be something like 18 and 7, 19 and 6. Yep. So. so we'll wish them luck tomorrow. And Getting to the, the tournament, and, and as that. well for the guys. If they win, they get a nice higher seating. Game point to the Dons. Mike Cummings with the serve. Quick set. Good kill by Matt Denmark. 
momentarily staves off defeat. Life still exists for Ball State here in game three. Denmark will now serve. Denmark hitting around 36%. We just haven't called his name a lot lately. IPFW serving well. Gislin with the set. Good dig. Solid shot by Market. And it's 14 to 6. Market loves the angle. That time sneaking it under the arms of Gislin and Ruiz. A little bit long on the kill attempt by Scott Lane. And right now it's 14-7. Cardinals two points in a row. Serve into the net. Side out, Dons. Chris Kiston will be serving for the win here in game number three. Crowd on its feet. Free ball, no. There it is, IPFW wins game three, 15-7. They now lead the match two games to one. Ball State winning the first game 15-9, IPFW coming back 15-8 and 15-7. Let's take a break and then we'll return. You're watching IPFW Volleyball here on College 56 Sports. She is one of America's toughest drug enforcement agents. Last year, she helped convict 90 drug dealers, seize several tons of crack and marijuana, and close down 10 major drug operations. She is a 68-year-old grandmother named Irma. She set up a community drug watch that is not only changing her neighborhood, but its future. There are many ways to help in your community. Call the Points of Light Foundation. Do something good. Feel something real. On the big highway of life, there's only one safe place for kids. Black seat, baby. The front seat's not the place to drop seat, out. Baby. Don't want that big old bag to pop out. Black seat, baby. Put that food is in the back seat. Now. Black seat, baby. Have that some kids you never meet. I'm here to remind you to put them behind you. Black seat, baby. Wow. Look at here. Black seat, baby. To stay alive even when I drive. Take Simmons. Yeah. Give me Jones. Anderson. Smith. Lightfoot. Bishop. Hernandez. Swifka. Harris. Lavender. Uh, Peavy. Yes. In the game of life, you've got a much better chance at getting picked for a cool job with great pay if you take algebra, geometry, and calculus. You need to know how math can improve your future. Demand it. Call NACME. We'll tell you. Welcome back to the Gate Sports Center, everybody. Mike Miles and Ryan Peratt with you. We just finished game three, and we're looking at a replay, game point for game number three. Ball State not able to uh, convert the uh, free ball there. Thanks to Sports Information Director Mike Joe, we've got the stats now through game three, and Ryan, a quick look at them. Well, you take a look, it's overwhelming. Obviously, IPFW starting to play unbelievable defense. 32 total blocks compared to only 12 for Ball State. And they're also a digging Ball State, 41 to 32. Obviously, when you dig a lot of balls, that deflates your opponent, and that's what's happening here in these, uh, well, these last two games. IPFW has just uh, come alive defensively, and that's helping them out a big time. As well as some of the individual stats, Jeff Patak, 16 kills. He's hitting almost 40%. Angel Ruiz hitting uh, 500. He's got six kills. Hector Soto, 13 kills, along with Scott Lane, who's also have uh, 13 kills as well. Hector Soto leading the Dons and Diggs with 10. If you look at Ball State, Mike, aside from Brian Hughes, he's got 14 kills in 31 attempts. He's only hitting 11%, but Matt Denmark is gone. Mark Lau is gone. Those two big middles for Ball State. You know, we haven't called much of their names since game one. And as a team, 
Ball State only hitting 18% compared to IPFW's 25%, and uh, you're not going to win a lot of games like that. Yeah. Well, we've got a happy birthday to Leslie Johnson, daughter of Coach Dennis Johnson. Well, your Ball State, it's in a do-or-die situation. You're down 2-1, you lose game four, you go home. What do you do now? Pull out all stops. You gotta start, if you're Ball State, you gotta, you gotta do what you did in game one. You gotta get the crowd out of the game. The crowd and the momentum is all on the IPFW side. You gotta start passing the ball better so you can run the middle. The middles have been effective when they saw the ball, both Denmark and Lau. They haven't seen much ball since game one, and you have to serve the ball better. 21 service errors, make it now 22 service errors for Ball State. You're not gonna win games when you serve a lot of service errors. Well, Jeff Robertson began game four with a service error, and now Scott Lane serves for the Dons. There's a better pass, trying to go to the middle. Just no connection there. Ball yeah. State a little flustered. They're trying to keep it together, but they're a little flustered. You're on, you're on the road, it's a big match, playing in front of a huge crowd. There's a shot in the Good middle, game. nice up. A little pinball Cardinals defense by Cardinals. Soto with the kill. Plus, let's give credit to IPFW. IPFW right now, everything going right for them. Great dig again by Yuta Clay, who's Soto able to put the ball away. It's just a chain reaction. When one guy starts doing it, everybody starts doing it, and it's contagious. And IPFW play great right now. Another great touch on the block there by Soto. Good Another one by Cummings. One. Change of pace by Soto, and it's 3-0 IPFW. Fourth game in a row where IPFW has scored first. IPFW feels it right now. You can tell the legs are flowing. Everybody's into it. They're up 3-0. Lane continuing to serve. Good dig by Patak. Dig by B. Paul State. Oh, that's going to be a bad set. Point to the Dons. They are now up 4 nothing. Nice dig there by Patak in the back row. He's picked this game up. His fifth dig of the night. Jump serve. Woo! Nice service ace. Fourth one of the match for IPFW. When does Ball State call timeout? Right now, Coach Mike Boss. Timeout on the floor, 5-0 IPFW on top. Let's take a break. You're watching IPFW Volleyball on College 56 Sports. Go for an Indiana University business degree. But with housing and tuition, it really adds up, and the money just wasn't there to go away to college. And with a two-year-old, my housing options were kind of limited anyway. And the truth is, I really wanted to keep my job and stay close to home. Going to IPFW made all of that possible. IPFW? The best choice I ever made. Indiana University, Purdue University, Fort Wayne. The right school, right here, right now. Welcome back to a happy Hilliard Gate Sports Center right now. Mike Miles and Ryan Parrott happy to be bringing you the action between the 8th ranked IPFW Volley Dons and the 10th ranked Ball State Cardinals. IPFW leads two games to one and in game four they have jumped out to a quick 5-0 lead. And as you said, Ryan, the Dons are cooking on all cylinders. And they're tough to beat when they, when they are. They're showing why they are the eighth ranked team in the nation. Scott Lane with the jump serve. Good dig. Dig by Gislin. Nice bump set. And another oh no, off the change of pace shot. and they save it. I thought that was a it's point to the Dons, and I got to admit, I thought that point was over before. I thought it was down to Robertson got the hand under it. Gislin there with the fly swat block and says, no thank you. We'll take the point. This one's down for sure. 6-0 IPFW. Lane, the best server on the Dons. Another great serve. Block attempt is wide. So it is finally side out to Ball State, but the Dons ran off. 
six points in a row. That's senior leadership there by Brian Hughes. He said enough's enough. They're going to try to do something there, tooling the block. Tegerhoff with the serve. Good dig. Gistlin with the set and the kill by Cummings. Side out, Dons, and the crowd loves it. Huge blast there by Cummings. Hector Soto with the serve. Will it be the float serve or the jump serve? Go to the float. He's had a lot of success staying down. Another tough serve. And another hitting error. Nice shot, nice shot, huge. They're saying touched oh. by the Don, so it'll be side out to Ball State. Soto can't believe that call. Nor can his teammates. Matt Denmark to serve for the Cardinals. Good shot by Lane. Kill attempt this, or a block attempt is wide. Side out once again to the Dons. Scott Lane, another great set by Gislin. Lane having a lot of options. Should he go angle over top, decides to go line, tooling the ball state block. Good shot there. I believe that was by Brian Hughes. Side out, ball state. That's yeah. his 16th kill for Brian tonight. Only hitting though 11%. Good set by Gislin, kill by Ruiz. Side out IPFW. Chris Gislin to serve. Bad hand and all. Woo! Good dig. Hit there by Doug Market. Doug Market. Side out Cardinals. Nice defense all around by the Dodds and the Cardinals. Big bomb by Market out of the left side, splitting both Ruiz and Gislin. And as a result, a reward for his fine play, the Canadian gets to serve. With his team trailing 6 0 here in game four. Let's see what Ball State can do. I mean, they're down 2 1. If they do go on to lose this, see if they can take something away from this match. They will meet later on, first week of April at Ball State. Different avenue, uh, different venue to play rather. Ball State, a very tough team to play there in Muncie. That serve was wide, so it's IPFW now. Patak jump serve and it's long. Another service error, now serve goes back to Ball State. Mark Lau will serve. Gislin with the set. Dig by Lau. Nice save by Robertson. The tack saves it for the Dons. Point to Ball State. Again, one of the longer rallies of the match. Soto chopping every ball inside, angle, angle, and more angle. Unfortunately, that time he caught the tape. And just went out of bounds. Free ball. Gets them to the set. Now six to two in favor of IPFW as the Cardinals stage a mini rally. If you're Ball State, that's what you're looking for. One point out of time, try to negate IPFW from getting up more points. If you're IPFW, you want to stop the bleeding right here and go back and put some more points up on the board. Shot Lock there by Hector Soto. Wide. So it's side out to IPFW. Ruiz will serve. Dig by Gislin. Nice dig. And mark it. 
solid kill by Tegethoff. Robertson will serve now for Ball State. Hector Soto with a good kill. Great run there by Chris Gislin. And Mike Cummings running for a quick and the Ball State blocker went up with him. Nobody up with Hector Soto able to annihilate that one on the floor. Scott Lane with a jump serve. Ooh, tight nice, side. nice kill there by Tom Tegerhoff. Side out, Ball State. Cardinals trail 6-2 here in game four. They also trail in games 2-1 in this best of five match. Gislin with the set. Scott Lane with the kill, non-returnable. Side out, Duns. Hector Soto will now serve for IPFW. He's going to stay with the float serve. Solid kill there by Market. His eighth kill of the night. Matt Denmark now to serve for the 10th ranked Ball State Cardinals. Solid kill. Mike Cummings to the rescue for IPFW. Cummings with the drive again. Another great set by Gislin. And Cummings on the same page. The last couple of rotations. Mike Cummings. to serve. Good shot there by Mark Lau. Side out once again to Ball State. It's been 6-2 for a long time here. Eight consecutive side outs. Perspiration being wiped up on the floor. Brian Hughes to serve for Ball State. Attack with a solid kill, I do believe. Side out to the Dons. Chris Geslin now to serve. Serves into the net, however. Doug Market will now serve for Ball State. Solid kill there. It's a great shot by Scott Lane. Going down the line. He's got all the shots. Jeff Patak now will serve. Good dig by Patak. Soto with the kill. Seven two, credit Patak and Soto. That's a tougher play than it looks. Soto going on to falling away on the Jeff Patak dig set. Able to put it to the floor, great play. All around. Good dig by Patak. Good dig. Oh. And it's side out to Ball State. Great effort. Digging both lips. Both Ian and Clay used and Patak digging a lot of balls in the back row. Fortunately, that one just went wide. Seven to two. Here's our score, IPFW on top. In game four, Don's lead the match two games to one. Mark Lau to serve for Ball State. Soto hits it where they're not. Side out, IPFW. Angel Ruiz to serve, jump serve. And it's long. 
side out once again to the Cardinals. And Jeff Robertson will serve. Six foot senior from Racine, Wisconsin. Serves long. Back to serve, number 15, a lot of service errors by both teams. Trying to press to get a point up on the board. Cardinals have been at two for a while. Scott Lane on the serve. Look out. Solid kill by Mike Cummings. Makes it eight to two. Dennis Johnson loves those. It's his daughter's birthday tonight, <laughs> so we'll give that out to uh, his daughter, Leslie. Soto does the job. Nine to our score. Dons are on a roll. Now a little run for the Dons. Three points in a roll. And Coach timeout Walker. is called by Ball State. This week on IPSGA Update, we'll show you highlights of the ISO Banquet. The kickoff to Diversity Week here at IPFW. On the ins and outs segment, correspondent Dan Westrick explains the ballot for the Decision 2000 student government election. Plus, get the update on activities in the Student Government Association. That's every Friday at 1 p.m. on IPSGA Update, right here on College 56. As you were uh, reading that, a little replay of the uh, overpass kill by uh, Mike Cummings. So well, the freebie balls that uh, Coach Johnson loves. There's a potential volley down. Class of 2017, maybe, or... Great look at our crowd here tonight. Nice crowd here. Great support by PSW Volleyball. And they're going to need it now when they're in the road stand here. They got a lot of uh, home games coming up. IPFW does, Ball, uh, Ball State tonight, Ohio State next Saturday, and in a couple of weeks we'll be at the Spring Fling Tournament over at the Coliseum, so good to see the fans out supporting IPFW men's volleyball. Well, Scott Lane will continue to serve the Don six point away from a match victory. So Tom Tegerhoff will now serve for Ball State. Attack with a solid kill. Good look at Jeff Patak, the native of Hamburg, New York. Soto, float serve. Miss hit by Doug Market. It's point to the Dons. It is now 10 to 2. Nice dig by Scott Lane. Finishes it off. I do. No, nope, they say it's wide. Barely wide. Side out, Ball State. Matt Denmark to serve. Good dig. Another dig. And he is long, so point for the Dons, I do believe. Great or defense. Out to the Dons, Great defense by the Dons there. Yeah, Clays and Soto. With the digs. IPFW Mike. continuing to outlead Ball State in both blocking and digs. Nice change of pace there by Brian Hughes. Gives the Cardinals the serve. Cardinals trail 10 2 here in game four. Attack with a kill. I would have to say, Ryan, Jeff has got to be the best player on the floor for IPFW tonight so far. Jeff has played very well. A couple of outstanding performances. Gislin has also played great tonight. Uh, Scotty and Hector, everybody's played really well tonight. Overpass, look out. 
Is that off the block? Yes, it is. Point to the Dons. 11 to 2, four points away from match victory. I think it was a total team effort tonight. Uh, they knew they were slumping in game one. They didn't play particularly well. And uh, they were able to bounce back in the next three games. That one's long. 12 2 now, the score. Chris Gislin continuing to serve. The Arcleos with a dig. Scott Lane, too hot to handle for Hughes. Makes it 13 to two. So much heat behind that arm of Scott Lane. Driving it toward the Cardinal defender. Don's rolling now, three in a row. Oh. And as, of course, as I take. say that, I'll jinx Chris Gislin as he serves out into the net. Tough serve. Substitution. Kyle Wendell comes back in the lineup, replacing Jeff Robertson. It's a little bit of a surprise with Robertson being the setter. A little bit of a surprise. This is a blocking strat strategic move by Coach Walton here. Get a big front line in there. See if they can perhaps stuff a ball. Mark it with the serve. Good dig. Good change of pace. But it's wide. Side out. IPFW. Robertson coming back in the lineup now for the Cardinals. And we got a substitution. John Thompson, 6'9", junior from Huntington Beach. And I think that may be the first substitution of the night for the Dons. First Dons. substitution of the night for the Dons. JT ready to explode with his jump serve here. Good block by Soto, and it's come to game and match point. Crowd once again on their feet. 14-2, game and match point coming up. John Thompson serving. There it, oh, I say net violation. Gislin can't believe it. Side out, Ball State. Life support still exists. A micro touch there by Gislin. He and Eric Blumon, the down official, having a laugh over it. Mark Lau to serve for the Cardinals, trying to stay alive. Side out to the Dons as Denmark unable to get the ball over. Once again, game and match point. Ruiz to serve. Solid kill there by Tegethoff. That's two of the nine lives that Ball State has uh, used up. Big bomb by Tegenhoff from the left side. All these players hitting the ball in excess of 80, 90 miles an hour. Soto, is it good? It's in. Side out once again. The College Cable Access Monthly Program Guide provides information about our programming, including live coverage of Mastodon Sports. To receive your free copy of the program guides and your name, address, and zip code, the College 56 IPFW, 2101 East Coliseum Boulevard, Fort Wayne 46805. As Ball State averts defeat again for the side out, you can also call us at 481-6056 and email us at cable56 at ipfw.edu. <laughs> Soto with the yo-yo shot, as I like to call it. Unbelievable disguise by Soto. Unbelievable shot. Hector with the float serve. So Dodge trying to nail it down. And hit the antenna and that's it. It is over. Game, set, match. IPFW wins their seventh consecutive match. By scores of 9-15, 15-8, 15-7, and 15-2. They improved to six and one in MIVA action.
Ball State drops to two and three in the conference, eight and five overall. Big win here tonight for the IPFW Volley Dons. You see players congratulating each other. We invite you to tune in to College 56 Saturday afternoon, March 11th at 3 p.m. for a replay of tonight's men's volleyball match with Ball State University. At Saturday afternoon, March 11th at 3 p.m., the replay of this match here tonight, right here on College 56. We also want to remind you that we'll be back tomorrow afternoon for more IPFW live sports here on College 56. When we bring you live coverage of the Mastodon's regular season basketball finale, with the men and women of Quincy University. So again, tune in tomorrow afternoon, February 26th at 1 p.m. for the women's game, 3 p.m. for the men's game, right here on College 56 Sports. Ryan, preliminary thoughts on this match tonight. Don started slow, but... Uh... After the slow start, IPFW was able to pick it up, and uh, that's good to see that they're able to come back under adverse conditions and uh, be able to pull one off. Uh, after game one, they just uh, blocked a lot of balls and they uh, dug a lot of balls. And uh, that was the difference. When you're able to dig balls and block balls, uh, it boosts your team uh, both energy-wise and on the scoreboard. And uh, that's what the Dons worked on throughout the course of the week in practice, and it paid off for them here tonight. Well, fine, fine effort uh, by everyone on the team. And the, uh, the end result is a victory in four games. And this is good for the Dons because uh, good tough win at home against a tough team in Ball State, and that prepares them uh, for next Saturday showing against Ohio State. The replay of match point. There's a shot here by Hughes that hits the antenna out of bounds, and point 15 for the Dons. See you later. Ball State gets ready to get on a bus and uh, head back to Muncie. We also want to remind you that next Saturday night, the match against Ohio State University, we will be here to bring it to you here on College 56 Sports, so you don't want to miss that. Should be another fun one like it was tonight. Well, a little payback, as we said earlier. <laughs> you will do, sir. You want me to read promo number eight, which we haven't read tonight? The fans still mill around here, basking in the glow of victory for IPFW. Again, we want to uh, remind you that the telecast of this IPFW men's volleyball match was brought to you in part by Dairy Queen, Waterfield Mortgage, Fujifilm, Touchtone, Chestnut Group Incorporated, Farm Bureau Insurance, and Pizza Hut of Canterbury. At this time, we'd like to thank the College 56 production crew, the IPFW athletic staff, the city of Fort Wayne, Comcast Cable Vision, the IPFW Learning Resource Center, and especially the IPFW Office of University Relations and Communications for their contributions to this College 56 sports telecast. This telecast of IPFW Sports is copyrighted and the sole property of the College Cable Access Center and IPFW. Unauthorized duplication, exhibition, rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of this event without expressed written consent is strictly prohibited. We hope you enjoyed our telecast of IPFW Sports this evening and we thank you again for joining us. For Ryan Parat, this is Mike Moss saying goodbye for now. A reminder, IPFW wins in four games to improve to 9-4 on the year, 6-1 in MIVA play. And we remind you to join us again tomorrow as the basketball teams close out the regular season with games against Quincy University. Well, that'll about do it. For Ryan Parat, this is Mike Moss saying thanks for joining us and good night from the Hilliard Gates Sports Center on the campus of IPFW. Thank you.